Are you often running around on your own pub stumping? Or maybe you're more of a team player. You know, we've all got our own play styles, and some of these styles fit the solo queue a bit more, while others make us perfect for duo. In this Pro Guys video, guys, we're going to be looking at what it takes to be a great solo player versus an awesome duo partner. And by the end of this video, you're definitely going to be better at both. Although I'm sure you'll also find out which cue matches your play style a bit more. And don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for tier lists, pro tips, and more. Okay, so one outstanding example of a player who is more geared towards solo play is your boy Tifu. Yeah, he does phenomenal in both solos and duos, but based on his achievements, he actually has more solo placements under his belt. Plus, hey, if we look to his past, you're gonna see exactly what I mean. If we take a look at Tifu's rise to fame, we see an angle we've never seen before. So much before Tifu's rise to fame, he was seen to be a pure solo player. He was amazing at it. Just looking at his personality, we can tell he enjoys playing and dominating as a solo player. We've come to this assumption based on the evidence that we've seen. The history literally all leads up to this. Now, if we had to compare Tifu's dual team play, it wouldn't match up against someone like NRG Zayt. I mean, <laughs> come on guys, Zayt is way better, teamwork wise, okay? If we take a look at Zayt's placements, he has crazy, incredible performance for his duos and qualified three times, three times guys, for the World Cup with his partner Saf. These two are a lethal tag team like no other. You know, I sort of wish I had that kind of teamwork, but I probably never last that long. They're the team to stay so confidently in sync with each other's situations and always have each other's back. I mean, that's definitely something that we all envy. Anyways, let's dive a bit into discovering more about Tifu's career in solo play and how it measures up to yours. So, Tifu's rise to fame was slow, but steady. He was a longtime streamer and an ex-professional H1Z1 player. His solo reign was running rampant until Faye slowed it down. By recruiting him, it's almost as if Tifu was forced into dual team play with Cloaksy. But that's just not where Tifu shines, guys. Tifu displays solo dominance perfectly, <laughs> as he always is calm and controlled in everything he does in an arena match. You've seen him, right? I mean, if you watch his stream, you see many qualities and traits that revolve around solo gameplay. He doesn't rely on anybody else. He lands his shots, he can handle his own fights, and he doesn't need much help. Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Just ignore that. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so now tell us, be real, are you able to handle your own fights? Are you the type of player who enjoys roaming around the map alone? Do you like getting all the glory? Then solo play, my friend, is made for you. Solo gameplay is very different from duo gameplay. It's more about taking than giving. An effective solo player is confident enough to rely on his own instincts and game sense. So you like playing alone, huh? Come on, be honest. <laughs> but the question is, what does it take to be a good solo player? Firstly, my friends, you need to be ready to take things into your own hands. That's right. Much of solo gameplay is all about making quick and effective decisions. In duels and squads, you have many people to rely on, and one of them is usually the IGL. In solos, well, you don't have that added teammate to rely on. It's all up to the player himself. So guys, muster up the courage and go get them. Second, solo gameplay requires exquisite one-on-one -on -one fighting skills. Tifu is a great example, as we all know. We've seen this guy dominate fights in all ranges and clutch up against the best of the best. If you don't anticipate players' moves and you know how to counter them, you're in for a big surprise. This is further proven by the fact that most of the good duo players like Bugha, Tifu, and Saf used to be solo players and we see how they shine in dual gameplay. While solo players may be your thing, many pro players like Tifu play a variety of modes to stay ahead of the game. I mean, Tifu is so comfortable with solos, guys. He turns people into easy points. I've seen him do the most outlandish plays, and every single time you watch his stream, you can just expect something different. The guy is just crazy. If this style of play is super appealing to you guys, then you are most likely a solo player. Okay, think about it. Does that appeal to you? Okay, well, you're a solo player. The added ability to do things on your own and not rely on others is a great feat and talent that we should all strive for. But remember guys, we can't just have one of these two styles. Both are absolutely necessary for survival in competitive Fortnite. So you gotta learn both. Otherwise, you might end up like this guy. All right, now on to team play. So we talked about team play in the past and this video will refresh your memory. 
All right, my friends, let's go on this journey. Imagine being a pro chord player teaming up with the club. I mean, come on. Tell me, tell me, who wants to be in a 1v2 fight without any allies help? But unfortunately, we've all been through this sad stage of Fortnite. Put your hands in the air if you agree with me. I see all your hands. See, I know it's a lot of us. Now, if you remember before, being a solo player helps when you're in a situation where it's a 1v1, but not in a 1v2, unless, of course, if you're Tifu. Just look at all the Fortnite Pro teams participating in the World Cup. It seems as if they just have the best duo ever and their synergy is just perfect. Don't you wish you just had this type of player as a teammate? All right, let's just have some fun. Just close your eyes and imagine which pro player you would team up with if you had the opportunity. Okay, now how insane would that be? Crazy, huh? Are you the type of player that just loves grabbing all the loot? I mean, just all of it. You, I mean, you can't even share with anybody. Sitting on max resources and max ammunition and you can't even spare a single bullet for your ally? Oh my goodness. Well, I just want to say, congratulations, you just earned the rank of solo noob. Many pro players are all about craftsmanship, teamwork, guys. And if you just hog all the resources, weapons, ammo, there is just absolutely no way you will ever succeed as a dual player. Do you know that? It's the truth. You know, there's a very common problem we all share, all right? We all do. We don't know who to partner with. Many people struggle to find great teammates, and this, in turn, causes them to just lose hope for ever qualifying. Well, I do want to say, don't ever give up on your dreams so easily, all right? There's people out there that are perfect to team up with you, I promise. So I'm here to tell you that not all hope is lost. There are many ways to look for teammates that will truly care about progressing with you. From Discord to Reddit and many other social media platforms, there's a world of availabilities out there. But how do we approach this in an easy way? Like many pro players, you know, they all made friends by playing with people that have common goals with them. So don't hang around randoms or casuals if you're looking to go pro. Get into the pro court, okay, and start practicing. I mean, take Zay, for example, okay? He's a decorated pro player who didn't always play with Saif. I remember Zay playing in the Llama Lords clan with Kenneth and others, and this was all the way back before Season 3. So tell me, what do you guys remember before Season 3? <laughs> I remember this. Let's go. Just kill that really no, put that down right now. Let's go. Let's go, Summit. Yay! Let's go, baby! Woo! I think they see us. Oh, they might see us. On top of the tree, dog. All right, all right, all right, all right. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Wait, wait, I'm going to support you from yonder. I'm going to support you from yonder. I'm coming in, Summit. Jump down. Jump down, baby! Let's go! It takes time to find the right teammate, guys, but after exploring around, you're going to find the right person. Just be patient. So tell me, are you somebody who's searching for a great teammate? Well, let me tell you this. This is some truth. If you are, that's a good indicator that you are definitely a duo player. Okay, well, uh, now let's get into the story of Zayt. This man is a longtime pro player, and most people have probably heard of him. He participated in the first ever scrim tournaments that consisted of squads. Zayt is a certified team player, and you can be too, with a little help, of course. So let's see if you truly have what it takes to be a dual player. Okay, so when we look at Zayt's history, he's an insurmountable dual player with team play skills like no other. Okay, so we know that Zayt is a player that is not only effective at team play, but somebody we can definitely learn fundamentals from. Unlike a lot of other players who are very typical, Zayt offers us exclusive insight on how to outplay even the best of the best. The reason dual gameplay is very important, okay, is that in many of Fortnite's events, it's absolutely necessary that you have a partner. Like many trades in life, two are better than one. So when it comes to duos, so many elements are out there, yet it's hard to pinpoint which ones actually matter as much. When we look at Zayt's style of play, he's always close to his teammate Saf. They stick next to each other and they're always there to have each other's back. In fact, hey, many times when I see them push people, they literally don't even give callouts. I mean, it's as if their minds are in sync with each other. It's crazy. They know each other's style of play so well, man. It's amazing. Tell me the last time you had a teammate like Zayt's. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, we all know you didn't. So as a doer player, guys, you probably want to give very effective callouts. That way, hey, you can coordinate strategy really, really well. Even calling out something such as this. I'm low on ammo. I mean, that can have a huge effect. Although it seems insignificant and it lets your ally know that you won't be shooting or covering for a few seconds, if you're the type of player who just likes giving a lot of callouts, then again, this is a good indicator that you are a dual player. Now, Zayt is almost always there to help South out when he needs it. He's glued to him like a hawk and will even abandon loot to go save him. Tell me the last time you had a teammate who cared for you this much. You know, it feels as if teamwork and friendship have lost all its amazing meaning. 
Zay understands how crucial it is to have his teammate alive, especially in in-game circles. Okay, so another super important aspect of dual gameplay is chemistry. All right, everyone say chemistry. Yes. You know, we can see Zayt and Sav have similar personalities and style of play. So remember, when picking a dual partner, that's super important. Make sure you guys can relate. Okay, so if you're more on the aggressive side and you have a partner that likes to hide in bushes like this guy, uh, then you're probably not going to get past the second zone. All right, let's let's <laughs> that's not going to work. So be sure to click with the person that you're playing with. So out of all these qualities, which do you think you correspond with the most? Are you a solo dominator who stumps people in games? Or are you part of an elite SEAL team who just loves taking people down with tactics? All right, guys, let me know this, okay? Super important. Hey, guys, once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. A lot of great information for you, man, to take your game to the next level. Once again, it's your guy, Keith Allen. And again, follow me on Instagram. Send me a message. And, uh, man, I can't wait to talk to you. We got so much going on here at Pro Guys. Let's build that community. See you guys.